So Vince, we're here in a large cubicle shed here um, down in Munster. Could you describe the work you've done here? Yeah, first day I came in here, had a look, uh, fine size building, had seen the plans before I started, um, had made out the crossover points, uh, what was required to get to the parlour, to the right, the field to the left, um, locking cows back from cubicles, locking cows back from uh, zero grazing grass, uh, so we have self-locking stalls, three double lines of cubicles with self-locking stalls on the far off side. Yeah, all feed barrier is self-locking stalls. Yeah. Um, the cubicles, uh, the cubicle bed here is 14 foot. Um, the poles are positioned offset to the cubicle bed, even though the cubicle center is dead center on the offset. Um, the double bed here is 14 foot. The cubicles are six foot trees on a 14 foot bed, which are stepped back six to nine inches, varying. Uh, cubicles are hanging on three inch pipe, double mounting brackets. The brackets have four bolts, not two. Most others hang the cubicles on two and a half inch pipe and only one bolt. So you have four bolts, two bolts are squeezing on the, on the pipe and two bolts are squeezing on the cubicle. That is top and bottom. All the cubicle piping is mounted to the side of the rail, not welded to the rail. It's u bolted to the rail. Uh, the head rail clamps are as normal. Most people have the same clamps. The cubicle itself is Huberman pipe. 3.6 mil wall and it's not flaked in the corners and when you say not flaked in the corner what does that mean some of the pipe that's that is manufactured is not certified for tube bending where this is certified pipe for tube bending so the galvanized doesn't crack right there was a time that we had um piping that came in and you could have one bale perfect and the next next bale all flaked right so it was obsolete so we just had to pay the extra for the better pipe. What design of cubicle would you call this? Super loop. Super loop. Okay. Super loop. Right. Uh, you have grand spec and non grand spec. She's 900, grand spec is 960. They're the only two difference. Same cubicle, same thing, only higher by 60 mil, which is two and a half inches. Right. Position of that bar there, how important is that there? Uh, it's Top down bar. to the size of the cow. You can have Jersey Cross, you can have uh, Holstein, you can have um, British Frisian, whatever make a cow, you're all, no cow is the same, no herd is the same. My measurement is come up vertical out of the scraper passage and 1600 millimeters to the clamp. And that is across the board. It is up to you then, if you have a smaller cow or a bigger cow, you shove it forward and bring it back. Shove what forward to keep it? The, the whole head rail. You right. can slide okay. it forward, which yeah. the bracket on the wall allows you to do so. Right. Shove it forward for the bigger cow, bring it back for the smaller cow. Right. They recommend that you shove it forward when you put on the brisket board, which we put on a brisket pipe. So it is the pipe that keeps the cow back. Right. Not the head rail. Right. When a cow goes on her knees, she's going to utilize the space anyway, so does, this doesn't matter. Where she will not lie up in the pipe, she'll lie behind it. And regardless of the cow size, is that, that in a fixed position? That is in a that fixed never changes. Uh, fixed position. Yeah. Varies. I'm going into the cow again. Bigger cow, 67 inches. Smaller cow, 63 inches. Right. So you, just, you said a, we have a Holstein cow here on this farm? Yes. So the weight of a, a cubicle in? 3 foot 9, 3 foot 10. Right. I think they're 40, 45 inches. 3 foot 9, I think, from my remember. 45 inches. Okay. 3 foot 9. So if you had a crossbred there? Uh, cross buried anything uh, somewhere in three foot seven to three foot eight. Okay. British Frisian cow, same thing, 45, right. three foot nine. But that doesn't work. You can take a, a handy size shed of 63 feet, it's 16 spaces, and it works out of 46 and a half inch centers. The longer the shed, the better chance you have of creating a choice of to pull it back an inch or shove it forward an inch. The longer it goes, the better it gets. Okay. You can work your spaces. You have more options or more flexibility? More flexibility. Right, okay. In a six space shed, you might get 70 or uh, 33 spaces instead of 32. 
That's the way you look at it. Yeah. So the weight of a double bed then? 14 foot. Right. And is there any variation on that, do you think? Well, you would, uh, fella, you fellas go back to 13 foot 6 if they were tight for space. Yeah. But 14 foot is more than adequate. Right. You can have 15, you can have 16, where you have to work with 16 at times because you could have a pillar at the back of the bed and the scraper must pass it. And you have a pillar on the other side of the bed and the scraper must pass it. So if you take the bay width of 15 foot 9, which is centre to centre, plus the pole on both sides, brings you up to 16 foot. Pure waste of space. But you can't do nothing with it because of the pillars in the shed. Okay. That'd be in a conversion job. Right. Some of our customers in the UK would have sand beds. Yes. As to rubber. Is there any difference in dimensions then, would you see? Or? Uh, you'll see your, it's down to the cleaning of the bed. And if you look at this shed, there's in this 30 cubicles here, there is three cow dungs on that of different size cows, even though the cubicle centers are 45 inches. It straightens the cow more inside in the cubicle, but you have the smaller cow that can just take the angle right. and she will shit up on the back of the bed. Okay. So on some farms, I would see they don't have that flexibility there. They can move, they don't. It's they fixed to the wall. Yeah. But well, they have the ability to move We have the ability, yeah, yeah. It's a fixed, it's, important feature. it's an adjustment without cutting, rebolting, whatever. It's an adjustment yeah. that can be done. Yeah. And that is the reason for it. Does it happen often, typically, in farms? Most farms, uh, some fellas would be very critical of what they're cleaning off the beds, and they'd ring up and they'd ask to know, what can we do? And I'd bring it forward, shove it back. Some okay. fellas ask to know, would we, can we put a headrail underneath? You right. can, but you're restricting the cow on the neck. Right. Prefer to keep it where it is, put in brisket. Okay. And the br brisket is a pipe, steel pipe, no joints, joiner, no cutting. No, nothing, no welding, it's adjustable on the cubicle. Furthermore, any dirt, when you're washing the cubicle house, the space underneath the pipe will allow the dirt to come out. Yeah, it's important. But there's other, other options where it's fixed to the floor and... It creates a dung hole. Yes. Because you can't wash it out. Right. If somebody in here trying to clean out this space, it's gathering behind it, you'll have to pike it out and it's not a nice job. Okay. We're here. You can get your power wash and wash the whole at all. Okay. Height of bed? 8 inches, 200 mil, with the mat over it. Some fellas would like to go for the smaller bed, uh, not as high, 6, 7 inches. But you must remember there's a scraper coming down here, which is a 7 inch ear on the scraper. So if the cow is overhanging the bed, and the scraper comes down on a 7 inch bed, it is catching the back of the cow. Okay. So what that is doing is pushing the cow into the cubicle bed. Yeah. So my theory in all of it is eight inch with the mat on top. Right. And speaking of mats then, what have you put on here? A uh, Huber, uh, Huber comfort roll. It's a continuous roll, no giants. 25 mil including the bung. Uh, you can get in three different lengths. 1850 is what here, what's here. 1700 is another option. And 1600 then we have for wean links. So you have three options of the comfort roll. Okay. Well, and what he does is he is a bob man and he uh, cleans and sawdust and lime. So no joint is a help then, like individual mats, I suppose, or for a purpose like for that. For washing? Yeah. Or Super cleaning. job. Yeah. Very clean. Yeah. If you uh, lift up that mat, there's the concrete from first day. Yeah. Absolutely spotless. No Ooh. leakage, no, huh? no contamination of it. No contamination, everything yeah. is over. Yeah. And nowadays, there's a 15-year warranty with that Huber roll. Okay. Fellas will tell you this might be a bit hard, but anything is better than concrete. But I can tell you, if you give, leave the cows out in a paddock near the shed in summertime, at night or during the day, and you lift the gate open for the cows to come back into the shed, I can tell you they'll lie in here preferably than lie outside in the field if they have the option and I've seen it so your is as far as I'm concerned is co more comfortable than lying in the field right your position of your upright there relative to the pillar could you explain that and uh, the, the, yeah. the vertical yeah normally if that was clear span with no pillar in the shed I'd be going maximum distance between the pillars would be 2.5 meters I tried to try and keep it somewhere between 2.2 and 2.5. In this case, they're only 4.8. So this distance between them is 
2.4. Yeah. Right? Uh, but we have to offset it. One space is slightly bigger than the other because I don't want to pull where the cubicle is going. Right. Um, that pillar is a five mil wall pole, three inch outside diameter. The horizontal bar is 3.2, which is blue band, but the pole is red band. Where most fellas will only put in 3.2 pole, where we put in the five mil. And the difference pole. between red band and blue band? Uh, you have two mil. Yeah. Uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 4.5, uh, you're talking about 2.2 mil. That's the difference, wall thickness. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, longer durability. But in saying that, I have no worries about this because it's clean and dry. Okay. But you could have a lot of sheds where it could be damp, space sheeting in the head, no space sheeting here. We're on a feed passage here. What's uh, your preference and weight here? Uh, anything where cows are feeding, I would like to get 16, 17 feet. And in this shed, I think that's 17. That's 16. So plenty of space for circulation behind the cow of the feeds and... Correct. Where there's movement, where there's a lot of action. I prefer to narrow the scraper passage behind where there's no action, only to leave to come to feed, then have this too tight. Right. If this was only 15, I'd like to rob a foot off the scraper passage behind, if okay. that was 10 foot. Okay. Because this is where all the action is. It gives you room to walk down behind the cows to view the cows. If they're stalled here in the stalls, you can view your cows the whole way down. It's giving you plenty of access. Okay. Where if there's too close, they're dirt in the bed. And that, that actually, that dirt in that bed could be from cows backing back. Not lying in the bed, but I would imagine it's from lying in the bed. Okay, yeah. The step here then the cows are standing on, what height do you like that at? Uh, anything three to four inches, three inch normally guide, 18 inches out would be normal. Why, what's the benefit of that step? Scraper coming down the shed. When the scraper's coming down the shed, the cow is feeding. Her two front legs are up in the front and her two legs are on the slats at the back. When the scraper comes to her, all she's lifting is two. Where if the scraper was going right to the wall, she has to lift four. Right. She has to lift two at one time and two at the other time, okay. which is not simple on a cow. Most of the time it would knock the cow when she's in stalls. Okay. That'd be, but normally that would be two feet, which could have been two feet here, but it is not, it's only 17 inches. Okay. So we, we might walk up here sort of crossover. If it's the position of crossovers, um, it's, it's a debate I would say in a lot of farms, how often to put a crossover. What's the minimum or what's the maximum? In the olden sheds, you could have four, six bays. Four bays was 16 spaces. Six bays was 24 spaces, maybe 25. But the cows walked from one end to the other end to go to feeding, and there was not a bother with it. So you could actually double that to put a crossover at the other side. So that would be 50 spaces. But that's probably a bit big in my book. What we've done here is there's 30 spaces in a bank, a crossover point of three spaces, and from what I remember, there's 19 in the next bank. The way this man looked at it was that he had 30 per line and 60, he had 180 cow spaces on the bottom part of the shed, which carried him to grass. So his crossover point suited him on the amount of cubicles that he had here. Right. But we'll just say that he had all his cows calved and crossover point was there and the cows were up along the shed here. When you open the door in the morning and you're trying to drive the cows out into the shed, they could be going through this crossover point to take you for a spin. So you have to close all the gates. That's best practice. To get the cows out. Right. If you have a cow that just wants to go for a walk, but if you close, the, lock them out of their space, it's fine. Okay. You can put your crossover point anywhere else, but if you want to minimize work. Close the gate. Close the gate. Yeah. And I see your gate there. You, you We've made a two-bar gate, gate to flip over the drinker. There's a few features on it. Um, you have your two-bar gate. The only reason, it's only direction, just to stop the cow from walking through. Uh, with a stock proof in it, it flips over the drinker and it latches to the wall out of the way. Basic, simple, but it goes over the tank, it's out of the way, and it stores back to the wall. The trough itself then is? Uh, it's a four-foot uh, flipping drinker. Uh, 100 litres of prox, a fast-flowing ballcock, 
Uh, the only thing you can flip the drinker when the gate is closed. The gate has to be opened. In this tank, it's hinged on the middle. Right. The ball is not connected to the tank. Ball the ball come. is connected to the frame. Right. The ball does not turn with the tank, so you have no problem with water connections. If you come to the side, you will see what I'm talking about. The ball is connected to the fixed part of the tank. When you turn the tank, the ball doesn't turn. It's just the tank only. A quick flip. The valve that in that on inch and a quarter hosing will supply 500 litres per minute. Maximum cows drinking out of that tank in a minute would be three, and there are 15 litres per cow, so you're talking about 45 litres per minute leaving the tank, where 500 entering the tank. So the ball cock supplies. Water supply is the main thing in a truck. If we went for a bigger truck here, fine, perfect, more volume. But every time you turn that, you're turning more volume. Yeah. So if you can minimize the tank and make the holes bigger, you'll get what you want out of it. Right. The height of the trough then? Anywhere between 36 and 39 inches. These, I'd say, are 39. And that's exactly what it is to the lip of the trough, 39 okay. inches. Yeah. With a slight fall. That tank is not 100% level. There's a slight fall. Why? If you come back, to the water, there's duct in underneath this cover, if there's duct inside in that tank. So when I turn the tank, now all the duct is gone, but it's not. Now all the, the last of the water has gone to the end of the tank, and I flip it again. If I had that dead level, there'd be duct in here that had never leave You'd underneath never the bottom. Yeah, that's a nice feature. And the tank is stainless and the frame is hot tip galvanized. Yeah. How often would a farmer empty that typically in the winter? Uh, not too much in a crossover point because the cows are only passy it. Yeah. He might do it once a week. It depends on what they're eating of corn or whatever that would be stuck in a cow's mouth that she'd leave it in the water. Oh, okay. The crossover here, we're on a slat. That's not always the case on farms. Obviously, it's a big help to have yeah, it. Yeah, a great thing, very clean. Yeah. But, but in saying that, there's nothing wrong with a, a passageway. Uh, concrete it because when you flip the tank it automatically washes off the crossover point the next one the next crossover point I think we have no slat right in this shed and would you have it raised or flat I'd have it raised yeah because you have to you have to keep it curved to bring in the scraper yeah so two to three inches would be fine and even high in the middle or not or, flat or a four inch fall either yeah. way yeah wash it off fine so the cubicle uh, passage here then, the width again, I suppose, what's it's the minimum, what's the max? It's three metres, it's up. Which is actually 3.4. Okay. But for the length of the shed, if he's driving the cows down here, the longer the shed gets, the wider the passage it should be. Why? The volume of cows leaving their cubicle bed to go the same direction, out the same passage. If that was a short shed, of four bays, that's 32 cows in this shed. There is uh, all but 100 cows in this passageway leaving this 30, 60, yeah, 100 cows. Just a volume of traffic. Volume of traffic. Right. Give space to the cows leaving the passage. Right. Also, the bed, the, I got the walls to be stepped back in the cubicle bed. Most fellas will build the wall to the edge of the curb. So when they're leaving that shed, to come into this shed, the wall is out here. The cubicles are set back. And when they get to the bottom of the shed, the wall is out again. So if there's four, five cows walking on the line, their shoulders or their hip bones will get caught in the wall when they get to the end. Okay. The middle cows will free and the both outside cows will get caught. Okay. The overhead gate here, so what's the role of that in the cubicle shed? The up and over gate is over the length of it. The gate is nearly 17 foot long. Um, she's carrying two weights. It's Two latches with a stock proof, obviously, that the cow can't open the gate. 
won't open. And it's two latches when the gate is closed, not open, when the pressure is on. The gate will balance wherever you want it. And, and is there no, you know, it's all pre factory made for that, or is there an adjustment when it comes uh, out? Yeah, the, the adjustment is on the site when it comes out. It's adjustable on the leg to balance the weight of where the position of the gate should be. Yeah. And once it's done, it's done. Yep. You don't really be changing that. You're, you're, the same weight is inside in it, unless the cow dung or something is added to the gate that it takes it out of balance ever so slightly, but what it is is nothing. Right. So the difference between that gate and a standard gate that swings? Uh, the standard yeah, gate yeah. swinging is uh, a no-go in this shed. It's a fouling problem. It has to be either slide up or up and over. If you hang a gate on this side, a three-bar gate, and close it there, you open it, it's blocking that stall. Open it this way, it's blocking the stalls. If you hang it on that side and close it the other way, blocking the cubicles, blocking the scraper passage. So there's only one option here, up and over. Yeah. These gates are high enough for Tom's loader to go underneath the gates. They don't have to be taken off. But to take them off, just take one bolt, two bolts, and the gate has come off to get a clear span if you have a bigger loader. Yeah. And that's only in a case of emergency. Yeah. Huge flexibility. Yeah. It's all in the whole shed. So as you're walking out there, you're walking over a rope scraper. What's your view on rope scraper versus hydraulic? Have to cost a running, I would imagine, because when one goes down, the other comes back. Uh, quieter, uh, more friendly around the cow, I think, that she's not walking over this channel. I know she has a channel here right at the end, but she has space to do it. There's no one pushing her. When it goes to the opposite end, the cow is not being pushed. If, if the cow is being pushed to the cubicle or to the milking parlor, the scraper is miles away from the cow round in the corner. Yeah. Uh, seem to be more and more on the way yeah even though I don't do scrapers but it looks a good job and they're nice and silent as well aren't they quite yeah quite but it looks seem to be the way yeah yeah great so Vince um, there's obviously a lot of debate in terms of how often one would have a, a drop point for slurry the length of a scraper say versus drop points for slurry have you a view on that or you can look at that everywhere, but the more drop-off points that you'll have in a shed, the cleaner it's going to be. But there's also this situation where run your scrapers more frequent and you'll have a clean shed as well, no matter what the distance is. But some fellas don't do that. But my view is you'd want to be getting somewhere eight to 10 bays, you want to be getting a drop-off point if your shed is, we'll say 20 bays. Uh, or else like to run the scraper from one end of the 20 foot bay shade to the other end it's too much but eight to ten bays i think would be more than adequate without a without a drop point okay yeah light then the role of light in the shed space sheeting versus uh, space lights. sheeting in some sheds not a great job why cubicle beds up against them and vintage sheeting does live in water it, it's all down to where the shed is situated. What might be right for you could be wrong for Jenny next door. It's all down to the site. Some places are great, more places are not. But if you've got hard weather against that side of the shed, where the vintage sheeting is there, with rain, guaranteed the bed is going to be wet. Right. And what's the alternative to sheet it down? From uh, step out the sheeting. Right. And let the vent come up inside the wall. Right. Put the timber, instead of putting it between the pillars, put it between the sheeting and the pillar. Right. And let the she wind come up, climb. Right. Much the same principle. Right. And your bed is dry, because the water can't come in, because right. the sheeting is passing down the wall. Right. You've seen, there's so many different ways of doing it. Yeah. Some fellas leave a vent on top, with no vented sheeting, that more, might be even more than adequate. It depends on the site. Ventilation is a very hard thing to uh, quantify and Or even tidal. predict, probably. Pardon? Or even predict. Yes, correct. It's very hard to do. Yeah. What could be right today could be wrong tomorrow. Yes. You could get a great year this year and a very bad year next year. Yes. It's all down to weather. It's down to the position of the site. It's down to the size of the building and where the building is.
But this man seems to be very happy with what he has done. Okay. And I wouldn't be uh, a genius in ventilation. Yeah. Because it's very hard to make it. It's a hard science. Yeah. Yeah. The farmer here had went for head locking barriers. Uh, yeah. First of all, he looked at diagonal, but he reckoned that self-locking would be a great job for restricting the cows. If he wanted uh, that when he's feeding them, that he could lock the whole lot of the stalls, lock them back. If he had the cows in in the morning and he wanted someone to feed while somebody was milking, all the stalls could be locked, the cows could come back into the cubicle shed. Um, tail painting, testing, vaccinating, scanning, here's all his options. And he seems to be very happy and he's delighted that he did change from diagonal to self-locking. Okay, so we might just have a look and see the functionality of it and how it <laughs> works in practice. Uh, these are swing over safety stall. Uh, as you can see, space between the sheeting and the conrod is fairly close, obviously to try and minimize draft through the shed. Uh, normal cases, this is the way the stalls are. Opened, in open position, self-locking, swing over. So when the cow comes in, from the inside, facing me out, the stall will go to travel to wherever she wants. If she's reaching down, it'll be back and forward all the time. Uh, Lockable position is only one move of the handle. And once the cow puts in her head and goes to reach, she's locked. If the cow goes down in closed position, you can flip it. And the stall will go the opposite way. Leave the cows out. To open it, they're all automatic or individual, whichever way you want to. Then there is a swing over safety stall. So I would have seen some in the past and maybe different makes, they're quite noisy. There's a lot of rattle in the shed where they're, where they're used. So what's different about this? The, the, the stall is not hitting the conrad for op keeping the stall open. Yeah. It's closed. The flaps are up. Yeah. Where if I leave down the, the flap, That's what you have in the old ones. Yes. Well, this way. Yeah. You have rubber on top. You have rubber at the point here. And you have rubber if it goes the opposite way. Okay. But the, the whole manufacturer is sleeved. Right. The, the hinging point of the stall is sleeved. It's not a hole through the pipe. It's a collar, heavy wall collar welded onto the stall. Right. And obviously, they are blanked that a cow can't stick her head out in the wrong place. After the stall is the opposite way that the cow can't stick her head out here, mm. which could have been the case in the older stalls. Just where you were standing there, the height of the, the floor relative to inside. The back legs of the cow, they should be feeding out over 24 inches. That is the back legs of the cow inside in the scraper, regardless of what's happening other than that. But the back legs to feeding out over point on a raised feed passage of six inches, that should be 24 inches. From there, to the scraper passage, back legs of the cow. Okay. And where that's wrong then, what are the negatives of it? Well, you drop, well, the beauty about this is, the further up you bring the food to the cow, the further out she'll reach. But you have less quantity. So if you have the same height inside as outside, you have more volume, but less reach. Yeah. So six and one and a half dozen of the other. But nicking would be a big thing. Cows nicking themselves off the barrier. And what is the ideal height for a barrier? Uh, if it was uh, just a straight bar, from the back legs of the cow to the centre of the hole, and the pillar for a single pipe would be four foot, which is 48 inches, which is 1,200 mil. Right. Yeah. They're all important factors to get it right. The, every job is different because there's a variation. Greenfield site is grand because you can deal with it. But if you're marrying into an old building and going to a new building and we have to fluctuate and we could have 30 inches, but you have a restriction. But the best way is known down through the years, that would be the height. Seem to be happy. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm.